So I'm back in Spokane, South Dakota. And this time I am using the Primo EM272. Um, last time I was using one from Digitech. This time I'm not even using an external preamp. I noticed I didn't have to crank it at all. The preamp on my camera is way down. Way down there. Like I think it's, I don't know, below below it's not even one notch like half a notch so that's amazing that might have been true on the other mic too i never really even tried to tell you the truth i just heard all the buzz about preamps uh, maybe in a portable situation this is plenty good just bring along a lavalier plug it directly in See how it picks up my walking noise and things like that. Probably about the same. Of course, now I need something that helps stabilize the camera when I walk. It's called a gimbo. Gimbal? <laughs> gimbal. Gimbo. Gimbal. Kind of go in there without going in there. <laughs> so I turned off the stabilizer on my lens because that's making all kinds of racket. Um, so yeah, this is the Primo EM272. I'm in Spokane, South Dakota. Testing one, two, three. I do have a dead cat on, but there's really barely any breeze. I mean, you can kind of tell by looking there. Tiny bit, but not enough to really matter. I guess we're gonna have to learn to turn off things like image stabilization when it's not needed. So now I can test out this dead cat. There is a little bit of wind here. I just have it mounted on my shirt. Not a lot of wind, but see the grass is moving a bit. Whoa. Whoa, well, it even gets worse. Okay. Nice. I can test out the dead cat now. Of course, some of that is just to wind through the trees, but I'm sure you can tell the difference. You're probably gonna hear a little wind hitting the mic.
there's some wind for you. There a few seconds ago. If that didn't register some wind noise, then then it's really good. It's not a lot, but it's probably the amount you'd want protection from a reasonable, you know, level. And there's a little more right there. Of course, I'm. If I wanted to really protect myself, I'd probably wear it under my shirt, maybe, in addition to that. Then there may be other problems, <laughs> like my heart beating and whatnot. Well, that's not a problem, but hearing it on the microphone may be a problem. Yeah, as soon as I press play and start recording, the wind dies down. But I think I did get some wind. That would have tested out this dead cat's ability to dampen the wind sound a little bit. I'm thinking that may be a hawk feather. I'm not really sure. What do I know about birds? That would be my best guess though. We have momentary gusts of wind. You can tell by the grass. some rocks going on here. I'm not talking so much about that. I don't know what we got going on there. I want to come take a closer look. Crispy leaves. Love that. Trying to crank up my eyes just a little bit. A little bit more than it would recommend with auto. All right, let's go a little closer. So this is another house in Spokane, South Dakota. I think fewer people know about this. 
it's in a little deeper. But I'm kind of testing out this mic too. The Primo EM272. So this is with the dead cat and virtually no wind at the time. Do you want me to take it off to do a comparison? All right, hold on. All right, I've taken off the dead cat. Does it sound any different? Testing one, two, three, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. All right, it's kind of a pain to put on, so hope, hope it helps somebody. Hope it helps somebody. As, as long as we're here testing out this mic, quote-unquote, I mean, I wouldn't just go anywhere. Yeah, I would. One time I tried to test stuff out in my backyard. That's no fun. That is no fun. Next I'll be testing a gimbal or something, right? Because it's hard to hold this stuff straight as you're walking. I don't have a GoPro or any such thing. Maybe that's the solution. For some of... For some footage, maybe it is. If I would have had that going, or a dash cam, I would have caught a mountain lion running, just kind of trotting along the road. I believe that was not the last time I was out here, but maybe two times ago that I was out here. I didn't see it out here. I was like uh, two, three, four miles down the road from here, I think. Something like that. So yeah, I already have plenty of footage of this place. But uh, in, in another video, That's the trouble with this mic. I can probably hear all my gurgling sounds. Or any lavalier mic for that matter. Well, I went in there last time. All right. Awesome place. This is what it says. I think it's referring to whatever is past this fence, though. Danger, unsafe mine shafts and high walls, deadly gas and lack of oxygen, unsafe ladders, unstable explosive, deep pools of water. There's no numbers to call. <laughs> There's a blank spot to fill in such numbers but they don't have any information it just says stay out abandoned mine hazards yeah i'll stay out of there all right so here's the grave of james fernando shepherd born february 3rd 1850 Died June 21st, 1908. Murdered over a mining claim. And I missed this part. It also says, in loving memory from his grandchildren. You can see it, but there's a woodpecker right over there. Kind of got a silhouette, really. 
Larry flew off. Some interesting sights out here. Of course, I've not the first time I've been out here, but. There's the guy making all the racket. I finally found him. It was interesting when I was trying to look for him. Well, there was a cat just a few feet from me. Of course, that wasn't a mountain lion. I'm not sure if I should say I'm disappointed it wasn't. It was just a domestic cat. Or a house cat or something. Yeah, that makes a lot of, a lot of noise. I think that's the cat that squirrel was making so much fuss over. All right. Oh, the cat moved a little farther away. Thanks for watching.